So just what exactly is LiDAR, and how could Elon Musk and Tesla possibly have this issue wrong? LiDAR is, is a fool's errand, and, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Well, look, put simply, LiDAR is just uh, radar using uh, light, laser light in particular, instead of radio waves to scan what's in front of it. LiDAR stands for a lot of things, a lot of different definitions here, but the one we're going to use is light, detection, and ranging. And it was the next big iteration in remote sensing and imaging about 30 years ago. Today, it's in everything from airplanes to cars to ground survey systems. Not to leave anyone out of the party, sonar is something that people have heard of, and that's uh, what bounces sound waves off of objects to figure out what's near it as well. Just very close range. Most mid-range and luxury cars today have both radar and sonar. Radar is cheap and reliable to tell the car's computer system what's in front of it, whereas sonar, those tiny little round uh, wounds you see in your bumper that tell you how far away you are from something when you're backing up or going forward when you're parking. So let's hear what Elon Musk has to say about LiDAR. Doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That recording's from the summer of 2019 and it sounds to me like Elon Musk is just doubling down on his previous positions which made a lot of sense right up until about 2015, 2016. So let's take a look at what's changed and what's likely to change in the near future, as well as what LiDAR does that radar cannot. LiDAR uses light, and so a light wave is 100,000 times roughly smaller, a light wavelength, sorry, than a radio, a radio wavelength. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a really small wave, then you can resolve or see stuff that a radar wave wave can't see. You can scan someone's face and it looks like their face. And you know the exact length of like my nose or the eyebrow hair. This means autonomous cars could see smaller things like rocks, plastic bags, or flat things that are on a road like a mud flap that's come off of a truck, which I actually hit in my Tesla the other day because it didn't see it. It also see road textures. LiDAR also sees further down the road. Tesla radar sees about 150 meters down the road, but LiDAR can see 250 to 500 meters down the road. This means your autonomous vehicle has so much more time to stop or take evasive action if something ugly is happening in front. So let's look at what all of the other car companies are doing and tech companies are doing. In a word, they're doing both LiDAR and radar. If you've seen any truly autonomous uh, vehicle, on the road or even in videos you've seen that funny looking bucket spinning furiously on top and that is lidar if you think it's ugly and expensive well you're right lidar systems today are mostly bespoke and cost between five and ten thousand dollars a unit that kind of cost and complexity and not to mention the visual clutter just isn't going to be part of mass market vehicles or is it has something changed maybe aptiv which used to be a gm company called delphi at least a part of it Letter Tech and others have drastically changed LiDAR. LiDAR is now tiny, solid state, and inexpensive. Mechanical LiDARs are typically very expensive and unreliable. Today, we can enable our customers to develop and deploy an automotive grade solid state LiDAR at sub $500 price to the OEM. And in a couple of years, we'll be enabling sub $300. So for our customers, which are the tier ones and tier two, uh, system makers, uh, price is not an issue. It's really validation time. So over the coming two, three years, you're going to see a quite a large number of, of cars that will be uh, equipped with solid state LiDARs. The second key point that Elon Musk and Tesla are missing is that redundancy is a key driver, pun intended, of all autonomous vehicle systems. So let's get into that a little bit. Musk wrongly frames the argument as radar versus LiDAR. The solution to driving autonomously is going to be radar plus LiDAR plus cameras plus big data plus vehicle to vehicle communication plus the artificial intelligence that Musk is going to be so reliant on to try to get his systems functional without LiDAR. 
Tesla is taking a camera only approach to self-driving technology rather than the way the rest of the industry is doing it using the, the LIDAR sensors, the radar. Um, could Tesla beat Aurora and Waymo potentially with self-driving cars to market? We believe really deeply that safety is essential in getting this technology to market. And to, to operate these vehicles safely, you need to see the world clearly around you. Uh, and our approach is to use not just one sensor, but a combination of different sensors, because each of them provides different advantages and is going to fail in different ways. And so, for example, last year we acquired a company in Bozeman, Montana, that's developing a really innovative form of LIDAR. Uh, that allows us to see further than anyone else and allows us for us to react more quickly than anyone else as we're driving at speed down the freeway. We think that kind of innovation is the type of innovation that unlocks this technology, actually making its market for real and doing it safely. And so without those kind of breakthroughs, without that type of um, combined uh, holistic approach to it, we just don't think it's, it's ultimately going to be viable. We think all of it's going to be needed. And let's explain why. For autonomous vehicles to succeed, they must be at least twice as safe as human drivers. If not, every exceptional mistake, you know, every accident is gonna be held up as an example of why they need to be banned outright in some jurisdictions or needlessly delayed by years. This is not good for anyone. LiDAR and radar are certainly competitors. And that's the point here. In the case of autonomous vehicles, they're going to work together to keep us safe. Do you want to drive down the road with your family in a glass and steel box that does not have a serious backup system to drive and keep it on the road safely? I have a Tesla Model 3 now, which I truly love the autopilot and the auto steer on. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that the number of self-driving mistakes it makes is terrifying. Tesla's auto steer is acceptable for most, but certainly not all, highway conditions during summer months. As long as the driver is casually paying attention, the system can figure out what's going on and drive safely. But it can't figure out even the most basic navigation in the city. Teslas do not avoid potholes. They do not avoid road debris or even gravelets spun out from a, a road that's adjoining it. They can't figure out what to do when a lane ends which frequently results in the vehicle lurching dangerously into or out of a lane. And they certainly can't navigate novel road conditions like construction barriers, human flaggers, police, ambulance, snow plows, or accident scenes. They just get it wrong. The biggest point here as to why we think Tesla and Musk have it wrong is that thus far autonomous vehicle manufacturers have been given largely free reign to develop and test their wonderful life-saving machines on public roads. But this is going to change with accidents that will occur in the near future. Currently, there is a serious distrust among both politicians and citizens of both big data and big tech companies. Tesla likes to promote itself, especially to politicians and the stock market, as a tech company. That has worked in their favor for years, but we will not be at all surprised to see a few dozen autonomous vehicle mistakes result in high profile deaths and serious injuries. And that's going to lead to a very serious regulatory response that dictates what technologies must be used in autonomous vehicles. That is likely to include LIDAR. That will not be a good day for innovation. It will not be a good day for tech companies. It will not be a good day for car companies in the short run. But it might just be what consumers need to believe that autonomous vehicles are safe. If you like this video, please click like. It really helps with the Google algorithm and helps us out. We spend a lot of time and resources making these videos and would sure appreciate the help. If you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. We spend a lot of time on high tech. We spend a lot of time on energy. We talk a lot about electric vehicles. And when I say talk, we go over the facts. We try to avoid opinion. So even in this piece where we're talking about what we think is going to happen, it's based on facts. If you have any questions or concerns, we'd love to hear from you below, so please leave your comments and questions there, or you can always get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Thanks and have a great day.